All right. Hey, so we got the Advent candles, and there's five of them. The first week of Advent we celebrated was hope, that in the coming of Messiah there would be hope. And uh, the second Advent candle was peace, uh, because with the coming of Messiah there was to be peace. Third Advent candle is joy, because he was to bring great, great joy to all people. <laughs> see, see the joy you already have? <laughs> great joy to all people. The fourth candle is love. Come on, everyone knows John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's Christmas joy and love all wrapped up in one. And the fifth candle is the Advent candle of the Christ child. So Isaiah the prophet, 700 years before Jesus Christ was born, he wrote, a child is born, a son is given. In fact, the text tells us, for unto us a child is born. And now, as soon as I see that, that passage, I am reminded that Jesus Christ had a supernatural conception, but an absolutely normal birth. We so often speak of the virgin birth of Christ, and it was a virgin birth, but his birth was absolutely normal like any other kid. And so he probably got swatted on the behind to cry. Because <laughs> he was truly humanity. As much human, he got tired, he got weary. He had to learn. Question often is, do you think Jesus ever stumbled and fell trying to walk? Of course he did. He was, a, he was human. There's nothing sinful about falling down unless you push that person and they fell down. <laughs> what he had was a supernatural conception. The Holy Spirit, uh, uh, the angel uh, came to Mary and said to her, and she was ter terrified at his parents, he said, don't be afraid. I bring you good, good news that will be for all people. And he says, you're going to have a baby. And she said, uh, duh, I've never known a man. Uh, how can this be? And then he says this, God the Holy Spirit is going to overshadow you and you're going to conceive within you a child that is going to be called the Son of God. And so she had a supernatural conception. Something took place in that moment where deity and humanity joined natures so that Jesus at that point was both God and man. Wow. 100% human, 100% God. I know that's fuzzy math. That's biblical theology. That's the way it was. He had a supernatural conception and he had a normal delivery. For the text says, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Now, he was a son before he was a child. Now, that doesn't normally work that way for us, does it? He was a son before he was a child because he was the son of God. And be before they called him Jesus for all eternity... His name was Lagos, Word. In John chapter 1, it says, In the beginning was the Lagos, the Word. And the Lagos, the Word, was with God. And the Lagos was with God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things by Him were made. Without Him was not anything made that was made. And the Lagos became flesh. This child is the Son of God. He is fully human. He's fully divine as prophesied by Isaiah 700 years before it ever happened. Next thing I noticed in the text, it says, and the government will be upon his shoulders. The government. You see, this child was to be born a king. The ruler uh, and the government was, was his responsibility. He would shoulder it. Well, little did they know that there would be a crown placed upon his head, but that crown would be a crown of thorns. Because uh, Isaiah's prophecy spoke of a, a suffering servant of the Lord 
So on the one hand, he is to bear our sins, our iniquities, and he is to die. And so the ancient rabbis would study and say, there must be two messiahs, one who suffers and dies, and one who is to rule and reign. What they didn't realize is that there is a first advent of the Lord Jesus Christ who lives a perfect life and goes to the cross and suffers and dies and is raised from the dead and ascends into heaven as coming back again in a second advent to rule and reign on planet earth for a thousand years just as the introduction to the entire eternal state where he rules forever and ever as king of kings and lord of lords. Isaiah the prophet says, for unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders. He was born a king. He doesn't stop there. In the same verse he says, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor. Wonderful Counselor. You know, you know we all have many names. Uh, my name is Dennis. It wasn't always Dennis. For about the first 20 minutes of my life, it was Bruce. It was Bruce. And my mother, my mother said, had all this stuff going through her mind after she saw me and said he was not a Bruce. <laughs> what popped in her mind was a neighbor had a dog they named Bruce. I can't call my son. <laughs> Long ago, there was this floor wax called Bruce. She said, I didn't want anybody to treat my, dog like, my, my son like a dog. And I didn't want anybody walking all over him like he was a, a, like Bruce Floor Wax. So she said if he'd been born a girl, he was going to be Denise, changed my name to Dennis. So that's how I got my name, Dennis. No, Dennis is a biblical name because it's found in the book of Acts. It's Dionysius. And Dionysius was a convert to Christianity. Uh, he was of a philosophical, he was a head smart guy. I kind of like that. <laughs> But the name Dionysius is actually a name for one of the Greek gods called the god of wine, drunkenness, and debauchery. I said, Mom, what are you thinking? So I go by the name of Dennis. Some of you call me Pastor. My kids call me Dad. My wife calls me, well, let's not go there. <laughs> yeah, we go by many names. Jesus has many names, many names. I one time heard a, a preacher preach through every letter of the alphabet with the name of Jesus, and he didn't cover them all. Isaiah says, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor. My favorite translation of the Bible is the Net Bible, N-E-T, the New English Translation. It has, and he shall be called Extraordinary Strategist. I just love that. He's an extraordinary strategist. Can you imagine the scene in heaven? God the Father and God the Son and the angels all around. And the Father and the Son are talking about the plan of redemption and salvation. And, and the angels are learning it and they're saying, you've got to be kidding. This is the plan? The Son of God is going to be born in a stable? Come on, are you kidding me? He's going to be king of the Jews, but born among cattle, lowing, and sheep, whatever they do. And then, he's going to, his dad's going to be a carpenter? He's going to learn a carpenter's trade even though he's the king? Come on, what kind of strategy is this? Can you imagine a discussion going on? He's going to get baptized, identify... With those Israelites? Listen, they never listened to God. What, what's the deal? He's going to pick 12? Oh my goodness. They're not philosophers. They're not theologians. Look at this lot of them. They're fishermen. They stink. The one's a tax collector. You've got to be kidding me. Everybody hates it. And... and and he's going to give them the message. And it's going to be their responsibility to spend three years with them. And then he's going to die and be buried and raised from the dead and ascend to heaven, leaving the responsibility to these 12 nitwits 
Are you kidding me? What kind of strategy is this? The strategy worked. That's why you're here today. The foolishness of God is wiser than the wisdom of men. 1 Corinthians. God had a strategy, an extraordinary strategy, and he doesn't think like we think because his, his thoughts are so much higher than our thoughts as heaven is above the earth. So says the scriptures. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and he will be called this extraordinary strategist. And he'll be called the mighty God. The mighty God. It is mind-boggling for me to think that God was in that baby, the all-powerful God. Listen. The very first verse of John says, all things were made by him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. The God who made everything became part of the stuff he made. Wow, that's Christmas. That's what Isaiah's talking about. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and he will be called this extraordinary strategist, the mighty God, and the everlasting Father. I like the translation of the Hebrew here as the Father of eternity. The Father of eternity. Eternity for God is aligned with arrows going both ways. Isn't that amazing? It goes on and on and on and on and on, never ends. On and on and on and never ends. He is the self-existent one, but he's the father of eternity or he is the everlasting father because he is the one who created time and he is the source of all eternity but he's also created time. And I got that as a little blip. It's like a blip on the radar screen. <laughs> That's all of time. You're just a little tiny needle point on that little dot there. But as the father of eternity, Jesus secures with his own death on the cross the forgiveness of sins and the impartation of eternal life so that we, when we believe in him, get eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him, listen, shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Now everlasting life is a little different from eternal life that God has because God goes both ways. But when he created me and I accept Jesus as my savior, the line then goes on from that point forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Wow, Isaiah the prophet's Expecting a lot of this baby that's found in the manger. You see, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Prince of Peace. Please don't confuse peace with a truce. A truce. That's the way our world views a, a peace. If two nations are warring and, and uh, they declare a truce, they have peace. They still have hostility, anger, resentment, bitterness, and at any moment could break out in war all over again. It's just a truce. But we call that peace. We have it between North and South Korea. Right now with uh, the Russians uh, building up their armies over uh, uh, against the Ukraine and, and China threatening Taiwan. We're in peace. Why? Because nothing's happening at the moment. That's not peace. That's the world's peace. And Jesus said, I, I give you my peace. Not as the world gives, but I give you my peace. My peace. His peace is so different. You see, the Bible says he is our peace. And he makes peace with God for us because we are a fallen humanity and we, we, we're born into this world at war with God. But Jesus brings the peace 
and reconciles us to God so that we are at peace with God. And then he gives us the very peace of God to guard and protect our hearts when we just say, God, I'm handing this over to you. You take care of it. And he guards our hearts. He is the Prince of Peace. Wow. That's what Advent's all about. That's what the light in Christ child is all about. Isaiah was saying, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. During Advent, we've been doing a theme of a Bethany Advent, and I'm going to draw a picture that I call Bethany Advent. Don't know what else to call it. <laughs> you watch. Uh, so we'll have some uh, music in the background. The lights are going to go down. We're going to draw Bethany Advent.
came to earth to bring us joy and I just have to sing this song to you well, it goes like this the fourth the fifth the minor fall the major lift with every breath I'm singing We've been celebrating the last uh, four weeks of Advent with a little pen that we passed out. Each week of Advent, those who were here got a little pen. It was a wreath, and it had the name Bethany written through it. And that, that, that wreath was to remind us, the circular motion of it, that God is eternal. So every time you see a wreath, you've got you to think, the wreath has no beginning or end. It, it's a... It's a circle. It goes around and around forever and ever. And uh, that's our God. But then there's a little bow on it. And the bow kind of disrupts all of that. And, and that's to remind us how God disrupted all eternity with time. And he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to be born in a manger. Wrapped in swaddling cloths and, 
and he lived for a purpose. He, he kept saying, my hour's not yet come, my hour's not yet come, my hour's not yet come. And then the week of Passion, he tells the disciples, my hour has come. He knew that he was on a mission to go to the cross where he said, I lay down my life for my sheep. No man takes it from me, I lay it down. And the reason he laid it down, his mission was to be our sin bearer, to take all of our brokenness, all of our messed up lives, all the wrong, the, the things that we've done, and put them all on him and he would pay the debt we owe on the cross. It took an infinite person to do that. I can't die for your sins, I have to die for my own. But an infinite person can take our debt and exhaust it in a few hours on the cross. We needed a savior. So Jesus died, but he's no longer on the cross. It wasn't just being dead. He had to be raised from the dead. In fact, in Romans, it tells us that he was raised on account of our justification. That's really heavy theology, it just says this. If he had not accomplished the purpose of paying in full the debt we owed, he would have remained in the grave, but he was raised from the dead. Because he paid in full the price of our sin, he is able to save us. He ascended into heaven, and he's no longer on the cross, not a babe in a manger, he's in heaven, from which he now dispenses the eternal life to all who will believe. That's what Advent is all about. That's what Christmas is all about. And you can have him as your Savior too. You just receive him. I did it as a boy. I, I, I mean, I didn't have any f fancy words to say. I just said, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. And he knew what I meant. I was asking him to be my Savior. And that day I made him my Lord. And you can do that too. Let's pray. Father in heaven. Here we are at the end of Advent, which is just really the beginning of it all, the whole story of the life of Christ. Here we are celebrating the greatest gift ever given, the indescribable gift, the gift of eternal life found in Jesus Christ our Lord. May we remember on Christmas what he did coming into the world to save us from our sins. We have a wonderful Savior. Thank you, O oh God. In Jesus' name, amen.